We are broadcasting and let me pull this up. There we go. Okie doke. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to day three of Innovations in Recovery Virtual Conference. My name is Glenn Hadley. I'm the director of Foundations Event. I want to events. I want to welcome you guys here. Thank you all for joining us today. I just want to take a brief moment and uh, thank everybody for uh, participating this week. We have uh, we have just outpaced every Foundations Conference in the past with this virtual event and. Uh, for the thousands, literally thousands of you joining us across the globe, we just want to thank y'all for being a part of this uh, innovation in recovery, quite literally. Um, I, I'm going to go through a few things today. Uh, before I turn it over to Dan and his presentation, I'm going to talk about how you can view the other sessions and how you can get uh, CE credit for uh, most of these presentations. Um, and uh, we'll get into this deal and we'll rock and roll. Once again, thank you guys for joining us. So. I do want to tell you guys that, that we are here because of Foundation Recovery Network and Dreamscape Marketing. Um, whenever, uh, when I approached the leadership at both organizations and, and said that uh, we, we had to cancel the, uh, the original conference because of the COVID-19 outbreak, they said I wanted to do a virtual event. And, uh, and the leadership at both of these organizations said, absolutely, let's rock and roll and make this happen. So, I just want to really recognize Foundations Recovery Network. It's a, a, a fantastic company with uh, many different treatment uh, centers across the country, intensive outpatient and residential. Um, please go to their websites and, and check those out. Um, make sure that you, you visit them and, and, uh, and thank them for allowing us to have this uh, free virtual conference. Also with Dreamscape Marketing, I, I cannot thank these guys enough and, and uh, I've been singing their praises all week, but today it's a, a pleasure to actually have Dan and Dave from Dreamscape here to actually thank them in person. Uh, I, I just really appreciate you guys for jumping on board on this and, and, and really uh, making this possible because uh, without you guys, this, this thing just doesn't take place. So really thank you guys for, uh, for being here and being a part of this deal and, and helping us put this on. You guys uh, definitely go check out Dreamscape Marketing and see the wonderful work that they do. All right, moving on. So if you are interested in attending any of the uh, virtual sessions for uh, the rest of the day today or next week, you can go to frnevents.com slash IIR and register for any of these events. Also, if you missed any of the events earlier this week, you can go to the, um, to the same website. And if they're not up there already, we're gonna be posting them at the uh, conclusion of this. So you can go back and watch any of the previous sessions. And you can also, at the end of the event, go in and register and get C credit for this. Um, if you want information on how to get your uh, C continuing education certificate, or if you have any uh, questions about what certification boards are recognizing these talks, you can go to fou.cmecertificateonline.com at the conclusion of the entire conference. I've had a lot of questions this week um, from people that have, that have emailed me saying, hey, I can't log in and get my certificate. That's because this link does not go live until the end of the conference. So we have to wait until the end of next week to go in and get your certificate. So log in, watch the sessions that you wanna watch, and then at the end of next week, you can log into this website here, uh, pictured online, and, uh, and get your certificate there. Um, for any questions throughout the event or throughout this presentation, uh, if you have any technical questions or just wanna chat with me for some reason, you can go in the chat box and ask your questions there. If you have a question for Dan, for the presenter, you can go to the Q&A section and ask your questions there. I'll also be going through that during the presentation and we'll make sure that um, uh, that those questions get answered. All right, so I'm gonna switch gears for a second. So I wanna introduce you guys to Dan Gimp. He is the CEO of Dreamscape Marketing. And once again, whenever, uh, whenever I, I proposed this idea to do a virtual uh, conference, he was all about it. And, uh, <laughs> and, and I really can't thank him enough for being here. Uh, so without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn it over to Dan Gimp, CEO of Dreamscape Marketing. Thank you. All right, thank you all so much for being here and uh, thank you, Glenn. Uh, 
Today is going to be all about magic. We're going to be breaking the SEO code. Um, so with that, I'm going to take over your screen, my first magic trick of the day, but there will be many, many more. All right. So for those of you who don't know me uh, or may not know the extent of my magical abilities, uh, I do want you to know at the very least that I have the ability to turn invisible, if you'll take a quick look at my uh, video screen here. <laughs> and turn myself visible again, which is the better part of the trick. Um, and I do have a magic uh, coffee mug today, uh, just a normal Yeti, or is it? You can drink out of it. But some of us have the ability to make it disappear. And thanks to green screens, I can do that as many times as I want today. Um, so while you're all bored at home, I promise you I too am bored at home. Uh, the team has been working remote for about three and a half weeks. Um, our workload has actually increased as we're handling a lot of crisis communications and practicing magic tricks. Um, so uh, many of you are probably in pajamas right now. Uh, it's pretty early out in California and some of the other time zones, but uh, I do want you to know that I am fully dressed, except for shoes, because I don't have to, and neither do you. Um, so to take you into today's presentation, thank you again so much, Glenn, and thank you again so much to Foundations um, for taking this event virtual. And he's being very humble when he talks about you know, record-setting numbers. The whole country is attending these talks, and all of the other speakers are uh, so much more serious than I am, and they're covering great topics about um, you know, legislation, telehealth, and a lot of uh, CE credit curriculum. So today, there will be secrets revealed. I will be your host, I will be a magician, uh, but we'll be taking you through actual tactics, actual digital marketing tactics you can be deploying right now. And uh, there, there will be several big reveals on this presentation. You will not want to go anywhere. I'll keep you riveted to your screens. So again, welcome to Innovations in Recovery 2020, uh, the first of what I believe will be many uh, successful annual virtual conferences for foundations. Um, and I am your host, the great SEO Dini. Uh, I promised my team that I would do that, but uh, in reality, I'm just Dan. I'm Dan Gamp, I'm the CEO of Dreamscape Marketing. Uh, we've been in business for a long time, established in 2005. And we're working with a lot of treatment centers. Um, worked with uh, centers in over 37 states. We've launched over 600 mental health and uh, substance abuse websites. We've got 400 digital marketing campaigns in our portfolio uh, for substance abuse and mental health groups, uh, big and small. Um, and we've had seven clients that were bought and sold in the last year. Um, we've been heavily involved in the transactional work in the industry as private equities enter the space, uh, as owner operators look to make their exits. Um, there's always a marketing component. So a lot of what I'll be sharing today is from our data, our proprietary projects, uh, and I'm actually giving you our actual strategies today. When I say all will be revealed and I put on this magic act, uh, it's not as much of an act as I'd like it to be. So this will be um, truth telling and, and quite uh, you know, tactical. So while we've been around, we've actually uh, been blessed. We've been able to hire three additional team members uh, during this shutdown and this crisis, virtual interviews, virtual hires. So we've embraced this technology. We've always had the ability to work remote, um, but it's been kind of cool to see everyone else fully adopting it. And the fact that we're all on Zoom right now and you're all participating right now is amazing to me. So the first magic trick is this. It's the internet, it's telehealth, uh, it's you know video chat. Um, and so we're going to talk about certain tactics you can apply, but first, I want you all to know that today is going to be more than a little bit different. Today only, and only for you, I'm going to show you how the magic is done. Now, follow along with me because I need to prove to you that I have full control over your thoughts and what you do. I need everyone to either grab a pen or test their memories, but we're going through a absolute uh, magic trick right now. In your head, pick a number between one and 10, but don't tell me. It can be any number between one and 10. Now, I realize it's early, but multiply that number by nine. We'll wait, we'll give it a second. So pick any number between one and 10, 
multiply that number by nine. If the resulting number is two digits, add those two digits. Now, subtract five from your number. With your new number in mind, correspond it to its letter in the alphabet, A being one, B being two, C being three. Now think of a country that begins with your letter. And take your time. People don't all know their geography, but think of a country that begins with your letter. Take the second letter of that country and think of an animal that starts with that exact letter. You have to remember your animals, I know it's early. So the second letter of that country's name and think of an animal that starts with that letter. What color is that animal? But don't tell me, keep it to yourself, but what color is that animal? And to prove to you that I have full control over your minds and that everything revealed today will apply directly to you and what you're thinking. Is your Danish elephant gray too? You see how I did that? Now, if any of you got a brown ostrich from the Dominican Republic, it's okay, you're just a little different. Uh, you're in a teeny tiny percentile, about 2% of people would have gone that direction, and I don't have the ability to control your minds, and you won't fall for marketing. Congratulations. The rest of you will absolutely fall for marketing, and everything I say today will explain the full capacity of a marketing agency's mind control over you, but we'll also tell you how to do it. Seen a lot of chats coming in. I think we just blew a couple minds. Now, oh, and if you didn't get either of those animals, you can't do math, so go back and brush up on that. Um, if you're ready for the next exercise, again, I'm not sure if, if you believe that was a trick and not real magic. I need to compel you to understand that we're talking about real marketing, real magic, and actual mind control today. So answer the following questions as quickly as you can with the first answer that pops into your head. Don't think too much, just answer, dot, dot, dot. Question one, what day is Christmas? That's what day is Christmas? What number comes between one and three? What are hamburgers made of? What side of the road do they drive on in England? Now think of a color and a tool and say the first words that come to mind. Is your hammer red too? So again, the vast majority of you uh, just came up with red hammer for your answer to those questions. And again, that's me exuding my will over your mind and making you think whatever I want because that's how digital marketing works. 98% um, of of people that are asked those questions will answer with red hammer. And again, if you're in the 2% who didn't, congratulations, you're immune to marketing in a time where it is very good to be immune to things. Now, we can get into a few more serious topics, but how many of you believe that I just performed magic? These aren't parlor tricks. I'm actually controlling your mind, but for those of you who doubt me, the science behind our magic and sorry to spoil the fun, but I guess in the end, it's not completely magic. Uh, it is, however, an exercise in predictive analytics. I'm not controlling your thoughts. I just know what they're going to be before you think them. And that's very powerful in all marketing, okay? And we're gonna show you how to do this, but uh, you can use statistics and probability and general trends and the concept that we all shop the same way, think the same way, desire stockpiles of toilet paper in the same quantities when there's a pandemic around the globe. Um, these areas of statistics, they focus on extracting information that drive behavior. And most of you are experts on behavior. And you've witnessed on the front lines behavior and the therapies that can manipulate or improve it. So think about how long it takes to break a habit. Think about how you shop on Amazon and realize that that's how everyone shops on Amazon. Think about how you might Google specific phrases and what types of questions you might ask. And it's safe to assume for the rest of today's presentation that I already know all of those things about you, 
because Google, Facebook, Amazon, they already know all of those things about you. And I use those. So because everyone in the room, or I'm sorry, everyone who's virtually watching today um, has similar brain wiring, I've been able to predict with reasonable certainty the words, the animals, the colors you would choose. I can control your thoughts, but so can a billboard. So can a well-worded website. A little bit of alliteration there. And that is exactly how Google works. There is no almighty algorithm. There is no Wizard of Oz. If you look behind the curtain at Google, it's not magic AI that is reading your every thought before you type it in. Predictive analytics is a series of techniques. It is data modeling. It is marketing 101, right? How do I get you to buy that product that you've been looking at twice a day, every day for weeks? So this data modeling, this machine learning, um, as, as the internet does truly evolve into artificial intelligence where software can read and it can learn, um, these deep learning algorithms will evolve and data mining with companies like Facebook and Google, it's how they come up with and adjust their algorithms. But Google only reads at an eighth grade level. That's based on the Fleisch-Kincaid score. Um, and so right now, sure, there's deep learning on data, and yes, there's data modeling, but it still looks like charts and graphs that you're all familiar with. And you would generally be able to figure it out, right? If it is raining outside, what is the top selling product on the internet in that location? almost always umbrellas, right? And you would simply see a line graph that increases every time it rains in that location. So take that information and extrapolate it out for how we shop for medical services. Uh, the, the increase in uh, searches recently for eyeball pain. People are freaking out about corona and don't know if they have it. And a lot of the symptoms are the same as allergies and the common cold. And so they're searching the few symptoms that are unique, like eyeball pain and spikes in fever. Um, so these predictive analytics would allow us to gauge how everyone is feeling, what kind of actions everyone is taking, whether or not they're actually staying home where they're supposed to be. And through exercises like the ones we just did, it's one thing to conclude that a gray elephant is uh, what you're thinking, but it allows us to all get in the same page as Google. And in my world, that's page one. I'm sorry for the web geek joke here, but this is the first step in SEO is, is figuring out what people want when they interact with your website and your communication in general, right? Social media, alumni communication. Um, I did make uh, the later part of this presentation very specific to today's market and the conditions we're seeing right now. So let's talk about SEO in practice. And I did promise you all that today was going to get ridiculous, and so it will. We're going to keep applying our magic. We're going to keep learning how science, predictive analytics, and math power that magic. And then we're going to simplify it so that it's actually things that you can do, implement, take back to your team. So we uh, engaged in a satirical exercise, and I wasn't quite sure where to take it when I first presented this to foundations. We really had to talk it through. Um, but I can't share my client's data with you. I can't share HIPAA-based admissions data. I can't share my call tracking systems with you. None of my clients would give me permission to show you their successful proprietary campaigns. So I had to build a new client. And so today we will be revealing for the first time in world history, unicorntreatmentcenter.com. Please note that this entire part of the presentation is not to be taken seriously, but was the only way that I could fully demonstrate the magic of SEO uh, without offending. So don't be offended. So Unicorn Treatment Center is not a magical, fictitious place. It's a magical, real place. You can go online right now to unicorntreatmentcenter.com and see all of the magical therapies provided to our patients and alumni. And again, I wanted this to be absolutely ludicrous so that it's easier to give examples. We actually built this site months ago, specifically for today's demonstration, and it actually ranks number one for a variety of keywords, and I'll walk you through those. And then I'm going to show you how we did it, right? So the magic trick is we created a completely fictitious, ludicrous website as a demonstration to you on what's possible, but it's magic, okay? 
and then I'm going to show you how to do it on a real tactical level for your treatment center, your psychiatry practice, whatever type of organization you're involved in. This scales to all levels. Today's presentation is for everyone. And it's going to be boiled down to a level that you all understand. Otherwise, please type questions into the Q&A and Glenn and I will talk through them with you at the end. So as we get into this, Unicorn Treatment Center, okay? What do we provide? Is it treatment for unicorns? Is it an equine-based program where instead of horses, we utilize the magical unicorn for its healing properties? We rank number one, first of all, for our brand-related keywords, okay? And that's important for all of you, whatever your name is, and many of you have similar names. Um, I've worked with seven different uh, serenities and there are many new horizons. Um, and there are plenty of names that have the word step in them or first step in them. And so that's good. Those are relevant brands. It's, it's on trend. It appeals to your, your patient base and your potential customers, but you need to rank for that brand. And so again, we will show you a site and how to do it that does rank for its own brand. We rank for not just Unicorn Treatment Center, but if you search Unicorn Addiction Treatment Center, Unicorn Addiction Treatment, Unicorn Assisted Therapy Program, you will find our site. But now let's talk about specific lines of service, right? Maybe you're an outpatient center, maybe you're MAT, maybe you're only doing telehealth right now. Well, now we need to get these subsections of your site ranking, and we've done that. The Hokey Pokey Treatment Program, where you turn your life around, is the number one ranking result on the internet for that term. And I challenge all of you to give that a Google later, but I've got a screenshot in a minute. Our Glitter Detox Center is internationally renowned. We are the number one glitter detox center on the planet. Um, and again, when it comes down to magic, we do have magical addiction treatment programs and magical addiction therapy programs. So I want you to realize that while this is a fake website, we built it on our enterprise platform. It is built in the same platform as several multi-location hospital systems. It is deploying all of our best practices on SEO, and it is meant to be a ludicrous example so that no one accidentally takes it seriously. Uh, so please don't take it seriously. Um, but the concept here will directly apply to all of your websites, ranking for your brand-related terms, your service-related terms, and we'll even get into geographies um, as we go through this today. So this is Unicorn Treatment Center. It is a real website. It is properly titled. Uh, our programs exist under the drop-down menu at Unicorn Addiction Treatment Center on the site. And you can contact us, uh, but if you call our phone number, it simply spells the word unicorn and you won't be talking to anybody. Um, all of the content on this site is completely unique. We wrote it in-house. It is custom to Unicorn Treatment. Uh, and every page does detail the overview of our programs. The Hokey Pokey Treatment Program does instruct you to put your left hand in and take your left hand out as part of the treatment. So as we go through this, um, I want you to realize that it's real. This is a real website, but the magic behind it that's about to be revealed are critical steps to breaking the SEO code. Let's begin with schema. So remember a few minutes ago when I was completely controlling all of your minds? That's fun for me, but you can do that too. Uh, and it's not behavior modification, it's not a therapeutic approach, it's called schema, and it's the way that the human brain categorizes thoughts. It's how Google finishes your sentence for you when you start typing in a search and they complete that search based on what most people are typing in. So if you're looking for unicorn treatment, they know that you're gonna type in the word center next or that you are struggling with unicorn addiction and you're looking for treatment for unicorn addiction treatment. And schema has been one of the largest evolutions in search engines over the last few years. What used to simply be a keyword, right? You used to have to actually tell Google, hey, use the word unicorn on this page of my website. But you can now tell Google that it is relevant to everything that has to do with unicorns. So on your site, you don't just have to specifically type in the word addiction, you need to program in schema it is a markup code that discusses your location that discusses what relevant topics your website is about um, and it tells google's bots and software what to look for on your site this is one of the most important things we do and it's free but it's not easy you'll need a decent web developer to accomplish this 
So schema is part of what Google calls structured data. It's like using an adjective to describe something like the word best or a location. So structured data is data that's been organized into a formatted repository, like an address or a social security number, okay? Typically it's a simple database and it's more effective for processing and analysis. So the same way that I controlled all of your thoughts earlier, Google wants to know if somebody types in a town and they don't use a comma, that they are intending to put in comma state afterwards. And that way they are predictively analyzing your search. For our purposes, right, schema markup, it's actually a type of code that makes it easier for search engines to crawl your website, organize the content, and display it in search results. It communicates to search engines what your data means, not just what you wish it said. So in our unicorn treatment center example, the live website, okay, adding schema markup to our HTML, it improved the way that the actual homepage uh, displays in the actual search results. So on the uh, right-hand side of my screen, the actual live website for the Hokey Pokey treatment program page, right? The schema on that page makes it the most relevant result for that keyword on the entire internet. And if you look at the search result on the left, not only is it the top ranking search result and that wonderful picture of a guy with a unicorn mask on a couch, that's kind of creepy. Um, but not only is it the number one search result, it actually is contained in a box at the top of search results above position one called a rich snippet. And that can only be populated from schema code. Now, you can do this, okay? Schema compensates for misspellings. So if you spell hokey pokey with IE instead of EY, this page will still rank. If you uh, just played a great game of poker and you type in hokey poker because that's in the back of your mind, this page will still rank because this is the most relevant page on the internet to those intended searches. So number one of our eight secrets revealed is schema. Now, uh, some of you will be watching this today on a smartphone, but most of you in quarantine conditions will be watching this on a desktop. We'll discuss that trend later, and I am fully aware of that because I'm tracking you right now. Um, but realize that mobile-friendly user experiences is no longer just a marketing term. It's actually a best practice. Um, Mobile first is actually the best practice. So when we built Unicorn Treatment Center, we didn't just stop at a computer screen sized demonstration. That wouldn't be very magical. You can search it on your phone too and you'll see a completely responsive mobile first website, okay? So there is a mobile version of Unicorn Treatment that has different features, a different call tracking number. It's highly effective. And it was coded so that the layout adapts to smartphone screens and sizes and it works vertically and horizontally if you turn your phone sideways. And the tools that um, are going to force a web design to automatically resize like this, right, this responsive technology in HTML, is a simple layout language called CSS, Cascading Style Sheets. And your site most likely uses that already. It's the latest and greatest in design. But a code snippet like this one on your screen um, is what tells the design to render for a certain size of the device. So we can say, hey internet, if the screen that you're on right now is less than 1000 pixels, then please show the mobile version, right? And the device actually does tell the internet what its width of screen is and its resolution and all of that. So again, there is magic involved. You don't have to worry about that, but you'll need a developer to at least make sure that you have a responsive site um, and for the last several years, that's been a best practice, but you should. Why is mobile coding critical? Why is it one of the eight points of magic, truly powerful components that will make your marketing better, that will make your phone ring more, that will drive more people to unicorn treatment? 100% of Google's search results. Okay, this is very important to note because it happened over a year ago. Google uses the mobile version of a website's content and ranking for its indexing on all devices. So Google no longer has different search results for a desktop computer than they have for a phone. Whatever search result shows up on a phone is what shows up across Google's entire ecosystem. So the internet 
has gone mobile first and has been that way for a while. If your user experience is not mobile first and effective, um, you're gonna be losing market share at a pretty quick rate. Now, this is an old statistic, so it's actually substantially higher, but globally, including impoverished third world countries, 52% of all web traffic is on a smartphone. So it is mobile, but that is not inclusive of tablets, okay? So we're really looking at more like somewhere between 60 and 80% of all internet access being on some kind of a mobile device, but smartphones are the primary. 61% of mobile searchers are likely to contact a local business if they have a mobile friendly site. It is actually a trust indicator that you are up to date and able to service their needs, right? If somebody's evaluating right now, if they're on quarantine and they're evaluating a treatment center or a local psychiatric practice for help, they're probably on their phone first. And then if they wanna do more research, they'll shift over to a computer. How do I know that? Because they're the same as you and that's what you would do 61% of the time. 51% of smartphone users have discovered a new company or a new product while conducting a search on their smartphone. Why is that important? Because you're going to be new to them more than half the time. They're not going to just type in your website directly. They don't know who you are. Very few people in the country can even name three treatment centers. It's actually a question I ask my own employees and it's in their interview process. And it's very rare that someone knows three when I interview them and then they know hundreds when they start working for me. So if you're curious about how mobile friendly your site is, there are tools for it. You can simply Google, you know, a mobile friendly search tool or uh, one of Google's own tools. And don't, don't always trust site speed. That's a highly subjective metric. The only way to really get 100% for uh, mobile site load speed would be to remove all of the images and graphics from your site. Um, but you can get it going pretty well and you can analyze how it looks and how it performs on mobile so that you're capturing the most market share you can. Ah, more magic. This time, Google is performing the magic for you for free. So at Unicorn Treatment Center, right, we want as much low cost and no cost traffic and as many new inquiries we, as we can possibly get. And I think that many of you would welcome new business as well, especially now. So our Google My Business listing, right, primarily focuses on mythical health services. And we are located at 3124 Rainbow Poop Avenue. And it's in Brony, Alabama. And these are important because these are points of schema. Anybody near that town in Alabama would definitely see us in search results. It shows our hours of operation. It shows a link to our website. It shows our social reviews and how much people trust us. And so Unicorn Treatment Center, being among the most trusted treatment centers that engage in unicorn therapies, uh, is highly discoverable because we have filled in every single available field from Google's free Google My Business listing. Okay. Why is this important for SEO? Why is Google My Business one of the eight most important SEO magic tricks? That's because 16% of the traffic that engages your Google My Business listing knows who you are. They were looking for you to check out your reviews or come in for an interview or check out your address. The other 84% are brand new discovery searches. They're people that were looking for a service near a specific location, okay? And they find you. And in our case, they find Unicorn Treatment Center. These results often show up above organic search results. So you'll see some paid ads up top and you'll see the map, Google map results. That's where these show up. They get prime real estate. And over the long term, Google will monetize this. They'll find ways to run ads or charge for premium features. They do own the Waze navigation app, the GPS app. And so you'll start to see the two become intertwined, but Waze does have a paid ad platform and they've monetized that. So you didn't think your job was over when you launched your website, did you? You didn't think that that was the end game and if you build it, they will come. But you need to blast it out to the world. You need to now list yourself in the modern equivalent of the yellow pages. And 87.96% of the search market is going to find you this way. And it's free. And the reason is simply because of discovery search. And that is the same way you shop and the same way you search. So trust yourself in your marketing.
it's magic. Now, discovery searches are ones where the searcher was previously unaware of your business, right? So with five times the amount of unaware customers as the amount of customers who've heard you before, that's where your new business opportunity lies. That's where you're going to get new service inquiries. It is critical to feed Google every single piece of information available. Why would you leave a field blank on your Google My Business listing um, when it's free, when they're saying that they want that piece of schema data to help you rank and capture more interest? You want to accurately convey your business information to the public. Um, I am very bold in my stance on ethics. Uh, if you Google my name and the word ethics, you will find mainstream publications featuring that stance. But there was a widespread problem in this industry about two years ago where unscrupulous patient brokers were suggesting an edit. They were proactively stealing other treatment centers and other psychiatric business providers, Google My Business listings, changing the phone number to a phone number that was not theirs. And when these groups did not proactively manage those listings, in many cases, it stayed up for weeks or months. Now, Google has cracked down on that very aggressively as best they can, but the feature does still exist and it's still possible. So while they provide this tool for free, while it has tremendous value, you're almost ethically obligated to keep an eye on it and make sure that you're representing your business accurately and keeping your business safe. Um, beyond that, you want to propel your site into the top three, the Google local three pack, okay? You want that coveted batch of clicks. So you can all show up locally on Google Maps, but to show up in the top three, right, in search results themselves and gain that organic search traffic, that SEO traffic, uh, you need to realize that those top three spots get 32% of all the clicks and all of the paid ads above them combined only get 17% of the clicks, right? Just like you, every other consumer is smart and they know that those are paid ads up top. So they're becoming less and less inclined to click on them and they trust these local results more and more. So what are the must haves? Your contact info, your address, your operating hours. You must have reviews and the better they are, the better you'll show up. Um, categories, I'm sorry, and you'll want to respond to your reviews. Don't just leave them blank, don't leave them idle you're gonna to want to show the categories of services you're in. So here at Unicorn Treatment Center, we're in the mythical health services center. You may be primary mental health, you may be primary substance abuse, you may be a residential addiction treatment center. Those are all categories. Within those categories, you can enter your products. Maybe you only have a specific uh, gender track at your facility, so it's a men's only facility. You would put that under your products. And most importantly, a picture is worth a thousand words. The same is true on search. Photos, videos. If you don't have videos, make a slideshow on PowerPoint of a bunch of photos and upload it as a video. But when Google adds a feature, right, when they allow you to make a post, like a blog post, if you use it, it will help you. If you don't use it, your competitors will. So to truly embrace the magic, to truly make this one of your eight secrets to success, just fill out every field on Google My Business. Events, you can promote events, lunch and learns. You can pre uh, present uh, invitations to crazy webinars about magic and SEO. And you can post answers to frequently asked questions. So Google actually takes feedback on this product from its premier agency partners and businesses, and they improve the product and add to it over time. So you need to keep an eye on it and add to it over time because it's exceptionally valuable. Now let's talk about this local three pack and how well it will perform for you, right? So it's one thing to learn the magic trick, it's another to do it well. The local three pack, AKA Google map pack, okay? So don't, don't worry about our web geek terminology, just assume it's all generally related to Google My Business. The three pack, the map pack, local this, local that. It's all just Google Maps and Google My Business. This is where we want our organic search results to land. But why was that again? Why do we want to capture that lead in this map section of search results? Well, first on a phone, it takes up a large chunk of the screen, right? But second, 93% of search results will return a local pack in the top position, okay? 
So whatever you're searching for, best unicorn treatment in Alabama, right? You're going to see a local result show up more often than not in 93% of cases. So it is SEO that gets you there. It is content that gets you there. And schema will even allow your search result to show up if your website mentions a certain keyword, right? It can say, you know, Unicorn Addiction Treatment Center has content related to glitter detox. 44% of searchers are going to click on a business in the pack. So 93% of searches have this result in prime real estate and 44% are going to click on it. But we were just talking about those really expensive Google paid ads and they only get 17% of the clicks. Sounds viable, but not magical to me. 88% of searchers call or visit a business within 24 hours. So you want to talk about immediate need, right? This isn't just pizza places that want to sell a pizza right now. Okay. This is someone that just hit rock bottom that wants to detox now, or someone that just went through a family intervention. They're doing research together to decide where to go for treatment. Okay. This is 88% of searchers and you do it too. You are included in that 88%. Don't tell me that you're not. Um, the local pack listing, this is very interesting, actually outperforms the top ranking organic search result 3% of the time. So my whole company works our butts off. We've got 60 people working around the clock trying to get that number one organic search spot for our clients. And 3% of the time, the free map result, which can be optimized, right, will still outperform that. So while this is a highly coveted position, you don't have to be number one to succeed. Um, it's not impossible to obtain. It's quite, quite doable. And you don't need to outrun the lion. You just need to outrun the guy behind you, right? So you may not be the most tech savvy operator. You may be down the street from a huge campus-based facility with 40 marketing employees. You can still outrank them because you're local and have a more complete profile or better reviews. Um, just research that local competition and see what you're up against. Are there 30 treatment centers in your zip code, right? Or are there three and you've got really good odds. If you simply follow these best practices, if you simply take the magic tricks that I've been showing you, um, as we've applied to Unicorn Treatment Center, you're going to get there with a mobile friendly website, a user friendly website, accurate information, right? All of this is coming down to transparent ethical marketing. Right? So the real magic here is, hey guys, you should use all the free stuff that Google gives you because it's Google, right? And the more accurate and honest you are, the better it will convert to new patients and new business. Posting photos and periodically updating those is very, very important, okay? If a photo gets old, its value to Google gets old. If you constantly refresh or add even a couple new ones, right? Take one down and replace it with a new equivalent. Um, that holds value. And it is okay, you may not incentivize customers to leave a review, but it is okay to ask them to. It is okay to ask a happy customer to leave a review. If someone leaves a three-star review, it is okay to ask them, what can I do to get that number up? What would make you more confident that you had a four or five-star experience, right? Possibly it's a family member. Possibly it's not even the patient themselves that's leaving that review. Well, that's something that you could talk through with a phone call. So invite them to one. Um, but realize these tools are the magic tricks. Ah, get to the nitty gritty, the things that you can be good at. Um, backlinking. Okay, so this is one of the most valuable of the eight magic tricks. Okay, so this behind the scenes reveal is something that you should all learn and research and look into a bit more. Um, so what are backlinks or inbound links, if you've ever heard that phrase? Backlinks are links on another website that take you back to your website, okay? So a backlink can exist either as text, right? If you see a few words highlighted as a hyperlink and when you click them, it takes you to another site, that is a backlink or an image, right? An embedded photo or image. Um, a lot of infographics are backlinked, the entire file would be. And the clickable part of that backlink is called anchor text. So whatever that link is pointing to is going to rank higher for whatever words are contained in the anchor text. 
So if I am on centeronaddiction.com on my screen here, right, and I see resources for parents, families, and caregivers, and I'm reading the section on the benefits of unicorn-assisted therapy, okay, if the link contained in that text says unicorn-assisted therapy and links back to unicorntreatmentcenter.com, then my site will rank higher for the keyword unicorn-assisted therapy. And I hope that makes sense to all of you, but backlinks are actually simple in terms of what they are, but difficult to obtain. Um, so in theory, both quantity and quality matter, right? Everybody wants a backlink from the government. Everybody wants a backlink from major universities. Um, but if you're not able to get those, then a volume of backlinks is the next best thing, right? So quality, always wins, right? Uh, WebMD is the highest ranking medical website on the internet. You've all Googled random symptoms and landed on that site. Uh, it has a domain authority of 98 out of 100, and most of your websites have a domain authority somewhere in the mid-teens or 20s, to put that to scale. Um, so how do we use backlinks for SEO? What is domain authority? When another website does agree to link to your site, let's say that you've made a guest blog post or uh, contributed a testimonial on their site and they would link that back to you. Uh, they're essentially validating to their audience that you're relevant and that for SEO purposes, they do want your content to be valued, that you are legitimate and valuable. And the premise of this was people citing their sources, right? So if the internet was built for content sharing, right, the dissemination of information, uh, if there's a newspaper article, they would want it to link back to its sources for credibility, to cite your sources as you would a research paper. So the reason Google values backlinks and ranks sites with a lot of backlinks above sites without them is because of that credibility. You are being cited as a resource and as a subject matter expert every time you get a backlink. Even if it's a cheesy one from yellowpages.com, right? They hold some kind of value. Now, not all backlinks are created equal. The more reputable the site that is linking to you is, the more valuable the link, okay? And that's actually called SEO juice, right? A link passes a certain amount of equity value back to your site, um, but if it is a low domain authority site, it is a low amount of value, right? And if it's a high domain authority site, it's a high amount of value. How do you measure what's important? Again, you don't have to outrun the lion, just the guy behind you. So if your competitor has eight low value backlinks and you have nine, then you could outrank them for a wide variety of topics and keywords. Um, so it's just about staying competitive and out positioning someone else in search results. How would we have backlinked Unicorn Treatment Center in depth if it were real? Well, there's editorial opportunity, right? We can actually publish our own research on the efficacies of unicorn treatment and the applications of glitter in a detox program. Um, you know, outcomes tracking, what is the actual data that we can share on whether or not the Hokey Pokey treatment program truly turned people's lives around. So we would then get into guest blogging, right? Hey, Dan, great job releasing that research paper and your outcomes data. We'd love for you to write an article about it for us. Okay, so I'll go talk to groups like, um, you know, foundations and, and mainstream publication sites and healthcare sites, and I'll write guest blogs. And I'll ask if they'll post them, and they won't always do it. It's very frustrating. But over time, you will, and they will backlink to you because you wrote the article and you put links in there. Business profiles, right? That's the yellow pages. That's Google My Business. These are not, uh, you know, foreign concepts. They should be easily understood. But the more business listings you have and the more directories you're in, the more you show up, the bigger your footprint on the Internet. Webinars, right? The more you advertise and create landing pages for events and things that you're participating in, the more they get shared. Um, I made a LinkedIn post about this event and it had over 500 views in 24 hours. I think that's cool, but if other people share the link and other people reference Unicorn Treatment Center, if many of you go to the site afterwards and find this ridiculous and hilarious, um, there's value in that. You can offer free tools and services. So you'll see on a lot of sites, there are sobriety calculators where you enter your sober birthday and it tells you how many days, minutes, and seconds you've been sober. 
Um, tools like that can be embedded for free in other people's sites as long as you get a backlink. Um, we've seen some really cool tools about um, the street price of drugs and the actual return on investment of if you were spending $20 a day on heroin or alcohol, and even though treatment's very expensive, if you're saving $20 a day, it's about $7,500 a year. If you stay sober for two or three years, it was one of the best investments you ever made financially. Um, so that tool, that calculator, I thought was very clever because it did have an option to embed it on other websites and generate backlinks. Um, acknowledgement. So if you're sponsoring an event or you're hosting something, uh, simply having your logo on someone else's website with a link back to you is valuable. Uh, author bios. If you have a renowned or if you are a renowned uh, clinician or have key executives with large social media followings, if they are the author of your blog articles or research, then your site will rank for their name higher and higher over time. And these authors, Google loves known authors. It is a point of schema data. Um, badge links, right? So if you're part of an organization or you can create an organization uh, and get links on other websites, um, you know, some of the largest groups in addiction treatment, the national trade organizations that, uh, that you know, run the industry, run a lot of events. If you have a badge as a member on your site, it links back to them and it makes their site rank higher. Um, and I'm just trying to give you a bunch of ideas here. Right? These are how I would build links to my Unicorn Treatment Center. Press releases, okay? These aren't always super valuable backlinks. A lot of the times they're what's called no follow, but they are mentions. You are coming up more and more of the time. And some mainstream press sites have amazing authority and their links do count for your SEO. Um, comments, paid links, um, those are kind of older, old school tactics, so we don't really utilize them in our campaigns currently. But if you answer questions on public forums or you participate in um, any kind of sponsorship where you're buying a banner ad, that ad would link back to your website if it's clicked. And so whether or not the ad performs, the link still counts and you do still rank higher as a result. Um, so just a few ideas we're throwing out at you. We've seen a lot of creative solutions. Um, in some of our work, we deploy academic scholarships and they're real, you'd have to actually fund them, but then we'll submit them to actual .edu websites and you're getting backlinks from universities. So this concept of backlinking is highly valuable and it almost equates to equity in a house, right? The more you gain over time, the more valuable your website property becomes. Now this one's a little bit web geeky, so bear with me. You don't have to care as much. Um, if you're gonna go refill your coffee, now's the time. But uh, PHP 7 scripting, this is a secret behind our magic. Um, PHP 7 scripting has been in development for 12 years, right? Basically, all developers wanted the internet to be faster. They wanted to code using fewer words and characters. Um, everything that can be lighter weight about the internet and more high tech has gone into PHP 7. And all it means is, all it matters to you is that your site is built in PHP 7. More recent themes in WordPress, if your site is WordPress, are using PHP 7, but you're going to want to check. Basically, it can handle over two times the user requests of the prior version. It's skipped from version 5.6 up to version 7. And it is a massive speed increase, two to three times. It's efficiency. You can use 75% fewer commands to write the same internet code, right? So to web geeks, it's amazing. To you, all it means is all your stuff will load faster. Um, performance, in all of the tests that we've run and in all third-party testing, we've seen it perform up to six and a half times faster. So if you've got really fast hosting and really lightweight coding, two to three times faster is the average it can be a game changer. Why does this matter for your ranking and driving new inquiries? Load speed is a factor in Google's ranking algorithm. So the faster a site loads and on mobile first, right, the higher it will rank. And that's just one piece of the puzzle, but it's an important piece. So WordPress itself has a preference. They are, you know, updating and migrating their themes, tools, and plugins to all focus on PHP 7 scripting. 
and latency from the time of first request to first response. The lower the latency, the better the service. What that means is you aren't going to wait for a website to load. If you just clicked on it, you want to see that site. And just like you, your customers and patients want that experience as well. Number seven, the magic of content relevancy, okay? So there are pages of words that can be generated very cheaply by interns, and then there's real SEO. And it's, it's kind of surprising to me because we have clients ask us all the time, how's your page any different than mine? And the answer is simple, mine ranks, right? So for Unicorn Treatment Center, the technical page components we're looking at, and this is real, these are actually the things that we optimized, right? The URL, and I can't tell you how many of you are guilty of this. If you look at your site, it'll just be yourname.com slash services or slash program, right? That's the same thing that the local mechanic puts on their website, right? They've got oil change services. Google reads your URL. The, the page needs to actually be named with keywords. So the name of our Hokey Pokey treatment program page is unicorntreatmentcenter.com slash Hokey Pokey treatment program. Doesn't that make sense, right? But the names of many of your pages, I assure you when you look at your own websites, will be uh, short-sighted. I'll say politely. So the URL matters first, followed by the page title. So we made sure that those match. The page title is also Hokey Pokey Treatment Program. Oh good, Google's now seen that this page is highly relevant to that. The H1 header, okay? All that means is it's the main header of your content. It's the title of that paragraph, okay? The sidebar menu, so if you have secondary navigation other than the main menu on your site, whatever word is in that anchor text matters. So in this case, if you're on another page of our site, the link says Hokey Pokey Treatment Program. The body text, okay? We've used the word Hokey Pokey Treatment Program in this page like eight or nine times, okay? So we've got a highly relevant URL, a highly relevant title, highly relevant content that uses that word over and over again, but is authentic and unique, right? Um, and again, on the right-hand side is the bottom half of the page. We had to scroll down a bit. Um, but there's a footer menu. And in that footer menu, we put your address and we put your map, right? But you also can list your main services, whatever the primary things you want people to see on your website. Instead of the entire main menu, you can just highlight the most magical services you provide down there like the Hokey Pokey treatment program. So relevancy is the driving force behind content marketing, not keywords, not even topic, relevancy, right? What are people searching for that you can publish content on that addresses their concerns? Now, compelling content optimized with keywords drives organic search traffic. It's that simple. Relevance for search engines means that a website's content actually contains those words. So to boil this whole thing down, you need to use the words that you would like to rank on search results for a lot of times. And that content needs to be completely unique to your site. The final secret revealed, and then we'll get into some trending and uh, let you get back to your, your pajama lives. Google data. So I've been talking about free resources and the things we use to power SEO and you've got to realize that all of the best analytics tools in this industry, right? The, the magic tricks, uh, the review of how well they're received, all exists for free. So Google Tag Manager is one of the most optimal ways to load these tools on your site. So you would have your web developer install Google Tag Manager. And that's just your tracking, right? Now you can track everybody on your site. You would put your call tracking software in that container. You would put your Google Analytics tracking code in that container and your Google Search Console tracking code in that container. And these tools will be, they'll give you a suite of measurement and tracking, right? So how many people come to my site? What page are they on? How long do they spend on it? Are there errors? Are any of my pages broken? Uh, am I just getting a lot of views or am I getting a lot of conversions, a lot of actual clicks and phone calls and contact forms? 
And these tools allow you to do all of that and they're free and you would be able to figure them out, okay? They're not, these are not web developers only. You'll need a developer to install them, but beyond that, you can use them. There's lots of YouTube tutorials on this. By the way, Google owns YouTube, so there's lots of tutorials on how to use their products on YouTube. When these are used together, it gives you business intelligence. You can now make good decisions. How did I know that people look for glitter detox more than any other type of detox? Because I have the data on it. I know that that's what they're looking for on my website, right? How do I know that the Hokey Pokey treatment program was the best name instead of a 12-step treatment program? Well, because people are searching for that when they're looking for unicorn treatment centers. And so this data, right, this business intelligence system, it integrates your call tracking. It can plug into your CRM, your Salesforce, your Kipu CRM, whatever it may be. Um, it would be optimized and improved over time. So I can write a page that ranks seventh in search results, but how do I know what needs to be improved to make it rank sixth and then fifth and then fourth and then first, right? I would use these free tools to keep an eye on that page and I would constantly add content and links to it until it ranks first, right? So this is magic, but it's not rocket science. Now think through, does Unicorn Treatment Program or Unicorn Treatment Center rank better, right? How do I choose from something as simple as that, Unicorn Treatment Program or Unicorn Treatment Center? That's why you need to look at this data because you might be producing large amounts of content that nobody is searching for. Um, and I'll give an example. Rehab program tends to be searched by people that are in recovery and they might be struggling with relapse and they're looking to get back into a program. Rehab center is searched by concerned mothers. And so it gets higher volume, but it is lower converting. Just one example. And we've confirmed that with our unicorn treatment protocols. So at a base level, make sure that you're using these tools uh, so that you're a marketing unicorn and not a marketing mule. Now, the self-heckle becomes extremely important. For those of you that did not find my magic to be compelling, for those of you that don't realize it's all completely real while I drink out of my magic coffee mug and make it disappear, right? You might be thinking, but Dan, isn't it easy to rank number one for completely made up unicorn services? Yes, yes it is. But this was an educational exercise. I couldn't show you an actual treatment center, so I had to make one up. And that was about as made up and magical as it gets. So this was an educational exercise to show you how digital marketing works and try to keep it engaging. I will show you a little bit of behind the curtain. Why don't we try a live search for something more relevant, right? So if you're my heckler, if you're thinking, sure, Dan, it's easy to rank for unicorn treatment. Do you think it's easy to rank for men's rehab program? And do you think that that would be valuable? Well, let's do that search right now. If I type in men's rehab program, you'll see a whole bunch of results. And let me break down what they are for you. These are the paid ads that just turned red, right? So the first four and the last four on the page are paid search. The government, Google does artificially inflate SAMHSA.gov as a search result for the primary resources it provides. And then these results. Well, that's weird. This is the first page of search results for men's rehab program. Oh, and those are Dreamscape marketing clients. So to self-heckle and call myself out, I want you to know that these strategies, those exact methods I just overviewed for you, the magic I just revealed, is exactly what we do to get our clients ranking nationally for these keywords but you don't have to rank nationally. Heckle me again, bring it on. Dan, I'm not looking to rank nationally. Our admissions only come from local. Good, that makes it easier. So you're correct, at the end of the day, your center is a local business and local search is where you must be, right? Um, that's not for everyone, but prim primarily, you'll want to rank locally as well. So let's try a live search with relevant addiction keywords and a location. So let's say your facility is in Portland, Oregon. That was the example I chose. Would we all agree that a valuable keyword phrase might be Oregon drug rehab, right? You'd want to rank for your city and you'd want to rank for your state. Well, again, here are our search results. We identified that it's ideal to rank in maps. So your paid search results are showing up up top. And then the Google local three pack. Interesting. So here it is zoomed in, right? The Google local three pack. And I want to remind you that the number one result, right, uh, in 93% in of searches is going to be this local pack. 44% of people click on a result here and 88% call or visit within 24 hours, right? 
So this can outperform the number one result. Oh, and there's a Dreamscape client. So I want to show you that this is real. I'm not withholding. I'm not holding out information. It is exactly how SEO is done. And it just needs to be done properly and using that magic. So now that you're all SEO wizards with me, and thank you for attending my, uh, my Wizard Academy, um, you should be familiar with these best practices. Let's talk a little more how digital marketing can help your business during COVID-19 and then call it a day. So while you're all home on your computers, right, or locally at your center, hyper-local marketing has never been more important. Everyone is home and they're not willing to travel and get on an airplane for treatment right now, but demand for services is at an all-time high. The stock market is dramatically down, there is a pandemic, and people are struggling with social isolation. So you will see over the next 90 days, massive spikes in demand locally for mental health primary and substance abuse primary services. Um, we were in business in 2008, 2009 when the stock market collapsed and we saw roughly a 1% increase in search volume for every 1% decrease in stock market value. So if we're down 30%, then you should be expecting a potential of up to 30% increase in demand for services. So how do you use this technology? How do you use SEO and content marketing to get to your audience and to help your community in this time of need? There is a need to stay at home. It happened quickly and drastically. Uh, I have heard that uh, people are struggling. They're stockpiling drugs. The street prices of opiates is up 20 to 30%. Uh, there, there are going to be societal issues and, and even at, at a death count level. This is an epidemic. We've had just as many people die of overdoses this year as globally from uh, corona infections. So you're going to need to rely on each other and your patients are going to need to rely on the information you provide. They're going to see their local search results. So whatever you're publishing is what they'll be reading. You must use your website, your social media accounts, and local press to connect with and serve the folks in your community. Okay, They have treatment needs right now. Telehealth is one way to do it. So let's look at, at the technologies available. Your website, you can add treatment protocols. You can add announcements to the very top of your website. We are open. We have a COVID-19 protocol in place. Our patients are safe. And currently, we have zero infections on record, right? Um, so those details, your hours of operation, an emergency phone number if they need to contact a loved one, uh, that's all relevant. And you can just put that on your homepage. Hyperlocal search. Now more than ever, you need to make sure that you're showing up in those local results. You might need to actually produce content with your town name and address in it. You might need to embed Google Maps in the footer of your website, but you're going to want to make sure that you're showing up locally. Social media. Use your accounts to be a source of alumni information, to be a calming source of information to your community, to let them know, hey, none of our employees or patients have had you know, have come in yet with Corona and we're taking every, every safety precaution we can. Um, and even one-to-one -one patient communication, right? People are in need. So send them an email, send them a text, call them, whatever you are comfortable doing to communicate with your audience. Um, these are the recommendations I have. This is the work that is being asked of us for crisis communication right now. And then embrace new technologies, right? Live chat on your website. Perhaps you could man that yourself when previously you were so busy that there was no one to man live chat all day. Telehealth, this is a low cost of entry. Some telehealth providers have been giving this away for free for a period of time, um, but it's easy to use. It's HIPAA compliant. Um, this technology is there. We are currently on a HIPAA compliant platform. We're on Zoom right now, and you're all experiencing what your patients would be experiencing through uh, a webinar use of Zoom. And it can be permanent, right? So if you deploy these new methods during COVID-19, you've now embraced new technology that can generate new revenue streams and expand your business in the future and protect your business in the future. And that's important so that you can continue to provide the services you provide. Now let's go to the simple one, email. I have received a massive number of emails on the statuses of treatment centers. We are open and taking patients, or we have closed our outpatient facilities, but are still accepting patients for all levels of care at our residential campus. Um, things like that, but proactive distribution of email, if you look at, at politicians and how they approach crises, proactive communication is going to keep people 
in a, a position of trust. It's going to keep people calm and it's going to keep people engaged. So use email, right? Uh, to send out your COVID-19 protocols, to reach out to alumni and let them know that uh, if they need anything, you're there for them um, and, and expand your alumni database. You have time right now to do that. So um, with that said, it wraps up my presentation today and thank you for witnessing the magic of SEO. Um, I do hope very much that you've learned and I've seen tons and tons of comments come in and a few great questions. Um, so realize that uh, while we're all in a unique position together, Okay, there's a great hope for the next treatment conference that we'll get to attend in person together. And I'm looking forward to hanging out with you all. Um, but our whole team is working remote, has been for weeks. Uh, we're fully operational and ready to help ourselves. So if any of you even have questions, I'm, I'm more than happy to volunteer information, services. I am trying to keep you all going and growing and, and providing your levels of care. So my email is on your screen, it is dgemp. D-G-E-M-P at dreamscapemail.com. And my direct office line is 443-535-6997. Uh, so with that, thank you. And Glenn, you wanna run through some questions? Absolutely. So uh, I, I've got a couple of questions here that, that I'll ask you, but uh, I did wanna make a, a, just a quick note and reiterate something to our audience out there that, um, you know, one of the things that, that we try to do as, a, as an organization in, in doing educational events is, is really provide content that it is relevant to what we're going through. And, and I want to thank you for, uh, for coming on and doing this and, and making uh, the, the marketing side of this something that, that is entertaining, that's very informative. And also just to let our audience know that, that, that this is extremely important in our industry right now because, and, and it has been, because there, um, there are so many people that um, are doing this, that are getting into this, and, and um, we, we struggle at times in our industry with, uh, with people that are getting into helping others for the wrong reasons. And, and if, if you out there in the audience are a principled uh, agency or company that, that are really trying to help others and to do, right, do the right thing, and you're not engaging in these practices there, there's just as many companies and people out there that are trying to um, take advantage of the situation that are doing this. And so I encourage you guys to, to use the resources that we have at, at our disposal like this uh, in order to get good principled uh, programs in front of the people that need help. So that, I'll get off of my soapbox at that. And let's go through a couple of questions here. So Holly was asking, and, and you may have to clarify this for me, we only have uh, two sections at the top of our GMB, and I wondered what we were missing. Where do the videos go or the photos? Great question. Um, so first, let me disappear and reappear <laughs> to answer your question magically. Um, so Holly, the, the goal would be to log into your Google My Business profile and just click on every single setting and feature. So right near the photos section. Uh, and again, always happy to help with this if you wanted to chat one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but right near the photo posting section are also options to post your videos. It's in that same media space. Um, and so if you're able to post a photo, you would be able to post a video. And then I would also go through and like I said, make sure when you're logged in that you check every single thing that you can and that it's fully populated with some kind of information. Excellent. Okay. Um, this one is a, a, a funny one from Ginger. Uh, she says she still wants you to tell how you did those magic tricks. Well, Ginger, that's magic. A real magician wouldn't reveal his secrets, but I can turn myself into a bobblehead at a moment. <laughs> um, Excellent. Right. And then I, I have a real question. Um, and, and this one uh, was born out of a conference that I was at where we did a roundtable discussion and talked about the importance of alumni in uh, not only the, the development of a solid program, but also in, in how to ethically uh, use alumni uh, to uh, editorials and alumni submissions for marketing. Can you shed some light on that? Yes, so in general, and I have a very unique perspective on alumni, I believe that they will uh, be the future of this industry, all right? so. The concept of churn and burn retail marketing to just constantly get new people into treatment 
Um, there's a limited audience, right? There's about 20 million Americans, 21 uh, struggling with addiction. But in any given year, there are only about 1 million seeking treatment. Uh, and if you want to qualify insurances and ability to pay, that audience shrinks dramatically. So the reality is, right, if your patients are your customers, and they are, that's how you keep your people employed and keep your lights on. If you stay in touch with them, um, first of all, it demonstrates sincere intent to keep them sober for the long term, right? And keep them involved in a community that they need, right? You need relationships and support. Um, but through mobile apps, through email, um, through telehealth, all these tools and technologies that are available, through your social media, you can create private Facebook communities for your alumni. You'll find that not only would they come back to you because they trust that sincere communication. I'm saying speak to your alumni about anything, right? Taco Tuesday is coming up. Who wants to go? Um, how are you doing during quarantine? Tell us stories of joy and success. We'd love to meet your pets, right? Um, Glenn and I were joking the other day that because of video chat, we've been meeting everybody's children and pets <laughs> and it really humanizes these, you know, big time executives and CEOs. Um, I'm, I'm lucky right now that my three-year-old's not kicking in the door and jumping on camera, but, um, but it's possible. So as you communicate with your alumni, make that human connection, realize that they represent a limited audience and that they have the ability to both refer other people to you when they're in a position to do so. And that if they are in need again one day, they will trust you enough to come back instead of blaming you for a relapse and going to someone else for care. Um, so the, the prioritization of that audience should be much, much, much higher on your marketing radar. And you can use very simple tools to do it. Facebook, uh, the Cared For alumni app, things like that. Right on. Man, thank you. I, I really appreciate it. I'm going to uh, take back over here. I'm going to rest power away again and uh, go through a couple of things here before we uh, we sign off. Let me do this here. All right. So just want to thank everybody for joining us for the presentation this morning in Innovations and Recovery, our virtual conference. Uh, I want to thank our sponsors again, Foundations Recovery Network and, and their uh, host of facilities across the country. Uh, and definitely Dreamscape Marketing for being a part of this deal and making this possible. Uh, please visit their websites and, and, and reach out to them and, and personally thank them for being involved in this and, and bringing this content to you guys. Um, if you would like to attend any additional sessions, we have one starting here in about 45 minutes. Louise Stanger is going to be joining us. You can go register for those, uh, those sessions at frnevents.com slash IIR. If you have any questions about how you can get your certificate of participation for continuing education credits, you can also go there and there is a link on there that talks specifically about this and, and how to get that. Here is the link for your certificate after the entire event is over. This is very important. If you go to this link right now, you will not see this site because it only goes live after the event is complete next week. But at that time, Friday of next week on April 17th, you can go to fou.cmecertificateonline.com and you can fill out your survey of the presentations through the, the, this week and, and next week and you will be able to print out your certificate there. If you have any other questions or would just like uh, to comment, you can shoot me an email at glenn.hadley at frnmail.com. That's glenn with two n's, dot hadley at frnmail.com. And I want to thank our presenters once again, Dan and Dave, thank you guys for all your help. And we'll go ahead and sign off. For thank you all for your time today. Have a great Foundations one. events. This is Glenn Hadley, your host. Thanks.